He started having night sweats, and I knew it wasn't going to be good. So we went to the doctor, and sure enough, after four years in remission, that cancer had returned. And intuitively, just like when I saw him and said, there's a man I could marry, I knew that this wasn't going to end well. At that point, I went for a massage. <laughs> I needed some stress relief. And as I'm on the table crying and telling this woman that my husband had just been diagnosed with cancer, she tells me, well, you need to talk to your angels. And I'm like, stop touching me and let me out of this room. <laughs> I don't need to know about angels. <laughs> but then she told me that she asks her angels for parking spots in Ridgefield. <laughs> and as any of you that live here in Ridgefield know, finding a parking spot is virtually impossible. So I started doing that. Just to, again, you know, I'm that people pleaser kind of person. And uh, I decided to start asking my angels for help, and especially for parking spots, and I would get them. And they were just proving to me right there that, that they were helping out. A couple months later, I went to Touch of Sedona, which is one of my favorite places in Marge. There's Marge. Thank you, Marge, I love you. And I had an actual angel reading. I don't remember who it was at that time, but she flipped a switch in me that, to this day, I'll never, <laughs> I couldn't live without my angels now. But she showed me how much the angels love you, how much they care for you, and that with their help, you can really do anything in this life. So I went to buy a book about how to talk to your angels, because I had to figure this out for myself. And I just would like to read to you, out of my journal, what they helped me when I first started, it took me a while. Again, it's not something that you can just turn on, but after, it was a few weeks, I think I had been practicing, and I bought myself a new journal. And so this was one of the very first messages. This was on January 11th, 2003. Dear angels, what would you like me to know? Dearest Lisa, we hear you and peace be with you. We want to guide you on your spiritual journey. It may be difficult, but you must trust us from God above. Your best interest is in our hearts. Please trust and accept us. Do not be afraid. We will be with you all at all times. You have only just begun your true spiritual journey. Please allow us to introduce ourselves to you. They're very polite. <laughs> but the interesting thing about his death is that near the end, he told me that you know, Lisa, I really wish I had done something different with my life. Being a corporate attorney and helping a big business make more money and figure out ways to put money here and money there for this company, you know, I wish I had helped more people. And this sat with me. He was 44 years old when he died. I was 37. So this thought about helping more people and really wanting to change your life at the end I thought, this doesn't make sense. Why should you be at the end of your life looking back and thinking, I wish I could have done it differently? Why not start now? As I approached my 44th birthday, I had gone back to an accounting. And because that was the easy thing to do, it was just easier to go back there. Even though I was still talking to my angels and doing all that, it was just easier to go back to accounting, but the angels made it difficult for me. They put some interesting obstacles in my way and really made me think about wanting to help others, to help more people. So that's when I decided to start Art of Living Happy and start using my knowledge of spirit and angels and meditation and to help others hopefully find what it is they want to do in their life, right here, right now, so that when you come to the end of your life, you're not thinking, I wished I should have done, I wished I would have done something different. I should have spent more time helping people. Imagine that there's a spirit that has something they want to say to you. It could be an angel or a light. 
maybe even an animal guide or whatever you would like it to be. But they definitely have a message for you. And if you're not visual, that's fine. Just imagine it. And if you don't hear anything, that's fine too. Just imagine what you would like to be told, what you're yearning to hear. He's just coming through, just with such grace and such love for you. I can feel the energy just coming right through. Do you feel it through my hands here? He wants you to know that he's so proud of you. There's something about a window. Are you, is there something? Yes? Yes. What's... Is it something about, are you leaving it open, or is it? Yes. <laughs> OK. Uh. And the window that you said, she always sends me an email at 3 o'clock in the morning, because my husband died at 3 in the morning. And she sends me emails at like 3.24 in the morning from home to work. And, and she said to me, he always tells me, tell you to open that window and open the door, because I always close.